Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 30 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play series. This game pack by Jade Cat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Last time, I set up a really fun big reactor with a redneck controller to automatically regulate it so it'll never have too much energy, except somehow it got deactivated. I don't know if that happens every time I'm offline or not. Hmm... A little strange. Oh, you know what it is? I went up and I scanned everything, including the uh, um, Eulorium fuel rod inside, which means I broke the reactor. Hmm. Let me make sure this guy's still good. Yep. So if you break the reactor, you have to come down and you have to re-enable it. But as you can see, it's already self-regulating again. So I want to use all of the new energy production I have. And to do that, I have a particular device in mind. I plan on using the laser drill from Mine Factory Reloaded. And this guy, it's basically an ore generation system. It's going to fire a giant fiery laser out of the sky down into the void, collect little bits of the void, and turn it into blocks of ore. Uh, the basic, the actual laser drill block itself, not that tough to make. A couple of illuminators, a couple of diamonds, some hardened glass, no problem. The laser drill pre-chargers, on the other hand, are going to require me to set up something new because I need these pink slime balls. And to get pink slime balls, at least the way you're supposed to, there is a workaround that I'm not going to use, but I can show you at the end of the video. But to get pink slime balls properly, you need to make a slaughterhouse. How about a slaughterhouse, not a slugterhouse? Slaughterhouse is another animal farming... Hmm... I could have sworn I had Invar Swords. I suppose... Oh, you know what? I'm voiding Invar Swords. Whoops. Just a moment. Let me shut that off. That did not shut it off. There we go. Activate once per pulse. So yeah, I made myself two Invar Swords and then, Im swords and then immediately threw them into the trash because I put them back into my AE system. Whoops. Okay, so, one slaughterhouse. There we go. And then on my way by, I can turn this guy back on. There. Get rid of all of the extra junk I'm getting from my mom farm. Okay, thanks. Uh, if you notice the ender pearl, uh, ender pearl, ender portal off in the distance, um, I think that uh, one of the times I bounced back and forth through the portal, um, it tried to put me over there and then found out that this portal was actually closer. It's a little bit strange. I should probably fly out there sometime and see if that goes anywhere new. Uh, I think that that's just a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a bug. So as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of baby animals in here um, waiting to grow up. And once they do, well, bad things will happen to them because bad things happen to baby animals on my island. So this guy is set to, um, you know, the standards, except I'm actually going to turn off sending fluids, and I'm going to set up the slaughterhouse. And I'm going to turn it around to face the right way. Slaughterhouse is a lot like the grinder, except when its um, idle bar empties and it kills mm -hmm. animals, it will either create um, liquid meat or pink slime, sometimes a little bit of both. So if I get enough of the uh, pink slime, I can get a bucket of it and set it down in the world. After that, um, I'll be able to uh, wait a little bit, and that pink slime will actually, you know, turn into a monster. A pink slime monster that will attempt to kill me. I assume to get vengeance from all of the souls of the uh, uh, animals that are trapped, encapsulated within it. Mine Factory Reloaded, everybody. Bringing you the absolute best and the absolute worst sides of industrialized farming. So, I'm going to sit down... A drum and a tank. We'll let the drum fill with the meat. These guys have got to grow. It'll be a little bit. But I can actually speed that up a bit by making those um, growth syringes that you've seen before. And I believe... Let's see. Dezombification. Slime and beginning. Ooh, I should make some of those. Yeah, slime balls and lipis. No problem. I'm going to make myself four of these. Ooh, and I need more syringes. No problem. Out of plastic. Nine will do. 
and then I can use the growth syringe to speed things along. But to make growth syringes, I need golden carrots, which take golden nuggets, or you can make them cheaper in the smeltery. Um, at the moment, the, or no, the golden carrots, you can't make any cheaper in the smeltery. The golden uh, apples, you could. At the moment, though, I just don't care. Like, gold is not a, not a precious resource anymore. Neither is uh, inventory space. There we go. So now you can see what happens when I perform, you know, industrialized farming experiments. Poke. And you. Oh, down they go. And I have meat. It's a little bit wrong. Little. What am I talking about? It's incredibly wrong. But also hilarious. Do not tell my partner I'm doing this. She would be sad on the inside. There's a way to make this process even faster and more efficient later on. Hmm, that's a little odd. Not quite sure what's going on here. Ah, there we go. There was some pink slime stuck in the pipes. So I have 266 millibuckets of pink slime. I'm going to need to get a full bucket worth. I'm going to keep uh, growing some of these uh, guys off camera until I have an entire bucket's worth, and then I'll show you what's next. I have been killing an awful lot of pigs and cows, and I'm up to just over a bucket of pink slime. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to make sure that I never need to do this process again. I've got my safari net on me and a auto spawner and a tesseract. Place the pink slime down into the world. Give it a little bit of time. And that should turn into a little baby pink slime. It's got half a heart. You know what? That's just not enough. We're going to embiggen that. Oh look, it's slightly bigger pink slime now. But it can get bigger. Oh wow, it's a nice big pink slime. But I think it can go one size larger. Oh, maybe not. Well then, that's the biggest that a pink slime can get. So we're going to suck it up with the safari net. And then this other one will take out with my looting sword. Oh, well, look at that. I'm lucky today. So I got plenty of uh, pink slime balls, but I'm going to want to be able to make more of these later. So having the reusable safari net full of a large pink slime will be worth it. All I need to do if I want more, you know, set down the auto spawner, put down the uh, test rack on the spawner frequency, set it to receive all. That'll work. And it's getting its power. It's getting its mob essence. And you know what? I'm going to put a lever on it before I start spawning an entire legion of pink slimes. Toss in the uh, safari net. You can see it's going to be idle. But if I turn the lever off, I can actually turn it right back on. Oh, no, it won't. So I can turn the lever off, and I can wait most of two seconds, or actually um, seven seconds. And one appears. And then I can turn the lever off, and, one, and no more will appear. And if I want to guarantee that I get a big one out of it every time, I can actually set it to exact mode. However, as you can see, if I put it to exact copy mode, it takes an awful lot more work. 50 instead of 15. There we are. Most of a stack of pink slime balls. So I'm going to go make my laser drill and my laser drill prechargers. Prechargers, ironically, are going to be easier to craft now that I have the pink slime balls. But either way, I'm going to need a total of six glowstone illuminators. And you remember how those are made. Boy, spawning and killing all those slimes seems to have done bad to my uh, FPS. So I'm going to get all of the materials together I need to get these crafted. I'll be back. All right, got my 
illuminators done cooking up I'm going to make the laser drill uh pieces now also i made myself two more uh resonant energy cells and two more tesseracts for this i'm not sure if i'll need both tesseracts but i'll definitely need both of the uh redstone energy cells so there's my laser drill and my four laser drill pre-chargers hey you know what would be great if i remembered to make all of the components let me take care of that Let's try this again. Laser drill pre-chargers. Needs pink slime balls. Gonna make one, two, three, four of them. And that's the maximum that a laser drill can use. Now, uh, you know what? I want a handful of elevators. So that I can get up to where I'm going to place the laser drill. Yes, up. It's going quite a ways up. You know what, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch. I got a whole stack of elevators now. I use the things often enough. Raw meat nugget. <laughs> I love how it's in quotation marks. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, the big pink slime dropped when I accidentally made it explode. So why do I need all these elevators? Well, I'm going up, way up. The laser drill is best placed at um, Y128 or above because it is most efficient when it is highest. Uh, let me get some border stone. I want the original four a long trip upward. Okay. And how am I going to get up there? Well, in the usual method, that is noob tower. So from 76, I can go up to 96. Of course, without uh, bringing any dye with me, I'm not going to be able to, yeah, set this elevator properly. Hang on, I'm gonna make some dark gray dye and re-dye my elevators. All right, so as I was saying, up to 96, and then from there to 116, and then from there to, oh, 130. And as is usual, I will get the structure built now and pretty it up off camera. Do not slip. I don't care how many hit points you has. If you're falling, well, actually, no, I could probably survive this fall without any trouble whatsoever. Still a little disturbing. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to have to change. That's a little better. Okay, so I want to build off of the side. Actually, I'm gonna have to head down and go check exactly what level I need to be at. So 1446 will be right in the middle. And that's a good spot, yeah. 1446 and 1100, I don't know, one or two. Maybe 1050, uh, 1095, something like that. Well, 1101 it's gonna be because that's uh, right off the side of the Jeez. Was it 1446? I can't remember. Let me go check. Yep, 
definitely feeling a little OP at the moment. Uh, and actually, I think that that's right where I want the laser drill itself to be. Put one precharger here. And I'm going to get my builder's wand. And set down a little border stone pad. You know what? I'm not going to use the builder's wand. I don't want a platform. I just want a little path going around the edges. You can see how the pre-chargers are creating uh, the laser, which is shooting out the bottom of that. Those lasers are dangerous. They will do a lot of damage and set you on fire if you touch them. The moral of the story is don't touch them. Now, why am I talking about this thing for power consumption? Well, it requires um, 20,000 redstone flux per tick to be able to um, operate at maximum speed. And furthermore, the redstone energy, uh, the I mean the laser drill priest chargers, each of them can only handle 5,000 of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up each of the pre-chargers with, well, I'm going to set up each pair of pre-chargers with a redstone energy cell in between them, outputting 5,000 a tick from two faces. Um, let's see, that's going to be the front face and the right face. And the top face is going to be the input. It's going to accept up to 10 and only output 5. And then the Tesseract is going to go right there. It will be set to default. It will provide, um, let's see, I want it to receive none actually at the moment. I'm terrible at this. All right. Item mode will be on send only. Fluid mode will be blocked and energy mode will be receive only. So it's receiving power and sending items because the um, laser drill outputs the ores that it gathers out the top. And this again needs to output left, uh, front and right and input top. Now all I need to do is hook up the conduits to the Tesseract. Theoretically. Oh, I got my colors backwards, didn't I? Hmm, let me go check into this. Something weird be going on. Okay, so this was actually just a display error. The redstone energy cell, it, resonant energy cell is in fact getting power. It was just outputting power exactly as fast as it was getting it. So you can see that the laser drill actually has some work on it already. And if I come over here, I can take a look at this precharger, and I can see that its energy is fluctuating because it is getting and spending energy just as quickly as it can. Fantastic. However, I no longer seem to be supplying enough power on that frequency because uh, my, oops, I don't know what I just did. My laser drill, well, I don't know if that's maximum speed or not, but the pre-chargers, a couple of them seem to be fluctuating slightly.
I might try to output some more energy on that uh, signal if I can. Wouldn't really be difficult. So there we go. I now have a laser drill. It is using an awful lot of power. And if I look up ore in my system, I have iron, coal, redstone, ardite, rutile, nether coal, nether ferrous, nether rutile, cobalt, a whole bunch of nice ores coming in. So now I need to get everything set up so that the uh, system upstairs is processing the new income of ore. And I need to plug this guy in so that he's uh, going to automatically refuel himself. Still not running at uh, maximum capacity. Yep, I definitely need to put, output more power on 25. But that's easy enough to do. I can actually just add another connection, right like that. Now if I go back over to my uh, um, reactor, I should see that the power reserve is dropping. Or it could be a liar. That's cool too. Huh. You know, I did all of the math very carefully on this to make sure that I have enough to run one of these guys. And it's looking like I might have enough power to run two. Which would be awesome. Okay. Uh, let me get what I need to set that guy up to automatically refuel and to put uh, together all of the ore processing that I need for the new income. Be right back. Alrighty folks, I've been letting the laser drill run for a while so that I could show you the kind of resources that I am gathering from this. And now I'm going to get the uh, um, room upstairs set up to be able to use all of these. So as you can see, I'm getting little bits of pretty much everything. I'm just going to go piece by piece and I'm going to grab um, a sample of you know, just about everything. And I think that I'm going to sort by number of items so that I can see, okay, coal, I have a lot of coal. I'm probably going to want to dedicate a uh, pulverizer just to coal. But on the other hand, if I go down towards the bottom, I'm getting barely any uranium and yellowite. It's going to be a shame to dedicate a pulverizer and uh, um, furnace pair to just those, but eh, such is life. It's going to have to happen. Oh, platinum, getting barely any of that. Nether silver, I have very little, but that's okay. Nether ferrous, nether emerald. I, mean, I imagine emerald and diamond. Yeah. They're not exactly flowing in quickly. Wow, I have a lot of diamond. I have a random diamond helmet. Huh. Neat. Makes me wonder how many helmets I have. Just the one. Good. Because I don't need my system flooding with helmets and chest plates and such. All right. So let me show you what I have going on upstairs. So, as you can see, I cleaned out the entirety of the old uh, processing system because it's just not useful anymore. It was really great when I was low on resources. It was super ultra efficient. And with the addition of, I don't have my inventory, but with using a couple of uh, Fortune 3 enchanted diamond hammers would have been even better. But it did cause a lot of graphical lag. Um, there was a lot of item entities being created, getting sucked up by the... Uh, um, vacuum hoppers, it was just not very computer resource efficient. This, on the other hand, is going to be extremely computer resource efficient while being slightly less um, good at producing mass amounts of in-game resources. Um, I might get two bars of iron for every 2.5 or 2.8 that I could have gotten out of the other uh, system. So it's a difference, it's just not a big enough difference for me to care. Um, what I have going on, I have the top row is all pulverizers, inputting from the top and outputting out the back. And I'm going to have, uh, I've got a line of uh, uh, impulse item ducts going in to send all of the uh, items from those pulverizers into this ME interface. And there's also a pulverizer right under there. On top of the pulverizers, I have precision export buses. The reason I need to send everything back into the interface is these nether ores. Um, iron on its own will pulverize down into pulverized iron with a 10% chance of pulverized ferrous metal. So I can just toss that straight into a furnace, no problem. Nether iron, on the other hand, will pulverize into four iron dust and a nether rack. And eventually I'm going to want those in the system. 
but not quite right away because if I go to my quest book um, and I go over to For the Hoarding, I can see on the side, look at that, I've completed the laser drill automated mining and I'll get myself three red laser focuses, three brown laser focuses, um, a full heart and my choice of reward bag. Uh, the laser foci, they let me um, kind of adjust the chances of the uh, laser, what it's going to dig up. I believe red does redstone, brown, I have no idea. There's a list on the Feed the Beast wiki if you care to look it up. If I use any laser foci at all, it will be yellow to try to uh, push this thing towards um, generating yellow right in uranium, but I really don't need to. So I'm going to grab that reward bag on the left. And I'm going to go, ooh, it was an epic reward bag. I'm going to go deposit these laser foci into my, you know, miscellaneous rewards chest. Oh, if you happen to want to rebuild the system I was using, I've basically put all of the bits of it here, except for the pneumatic servos and the impulse item ducts. So all of the schematics and the cyclic assembler and everything, they will live right in this crystal chest outside of the processing area. So you can play with that if you want to. All right, epic reward bag contains... Uh, Thaumium Scoop from the Zo My God reward section, and it has Repair 5 on it. Well, that'll be uh, somewhat useful when I get into bees. I won't ever need to make another scoop. Sweet. Toss that into my uh, stuff I'm going to use chest. And eat a full heart. 38 lives remaining. So the reason I'm not going to use the nether ores right away is the very next quest, quest. Raw ores requires a full stack of nether iron, half a stack of nether redstone, Stack of nether copper, half stack of nether gold, half stack of nether lapis, eight ardite and eight cobalt. I'd be able to, I believe I can complete most of that right now. So, ardite. And this episode's going to run a little bit long because I want to get this uh, processing uh, system put together before I move on. Nether iron. Yep, I have my stack. So yeah, all I did was run the laser drill for a while, and hey look, I've got all of the stuff that I need. Oh, I have almost enough nether copper. So, nether gold, I have enough. Uh, what was the other one? Nether lapis? Plenty of that. Alright, open you up, manual submit. So, ooh, forgot my nether redstone. Almost done. I need 13 more nether copper, which that'll just come in time. And that'll get me an ender quarry. That's pretty freaking nice. Uh, ender quarry uh, will allow me to go into the nether and mine ores uh, directly from there in an automated sort of way. Normally to make an ender quarry, you need one of these nether iridium, which are super, super rare and hard to get. And I don't believe I have any of that. Like the drop chance is ridiculously tiny. Yeah, I do not have nether iridium yet. They appear like one per chunk or something like that if you're lucky. It's just a crazy low spawn rate. So anyway, it looks like I can actually set up most of my nether ore already. So if I head back to my uh, system here, I can show you exactly why I wanted to separate things out. So let's set up this very first one for iron because I have a lot of iron and I want to start that pulverizing as soon as possible. So I'm going to put in one iron ore and one nether iron ore, which I grabbed exactly as much nether iron as I needed and no more. Sigh. And the nether iron. This stuff does not generate ferrous dust as it's secondary, it generates netherrack at a 15% chance. And I suppose I could feed the netherrack into the furnaces and get a bunch of nether brick, but that seems like a, a, a waste of power. I know I'm not too concerned about being super efficient, but I do want some efficiency going on. So the pulverizer will work its way through all of my iron and hopefully should be able to keep up with uh, the rate of production of one laser drill. I might need to set up more pulverizers if I was running multiples. But now if I look up the iron again, I will see that I'm generating pulverized iron. And I'm going to go back upstairs. Or, oh, sweet, finally, I ran out of power. So I've had a couple of people comment that these um, redstone energy conduits cannot accept um, more than 10,000 per 
system. That is not true. Each connection can accept its own 10,000 redstone flux per tick. The fact that I'm running it all through one conduit here does not matter. So I'm going to turn my reactor on. You'll see it get up to uh, full blast and the energy buffer is not filling. It's producing more than 10,000 redstone flux per tick, so it's gonna need more than one con uh, conduit. Energy buffer is not filling. It is now producing more than 20,000 redstone flux per tick, and that is all happily going through that one single uh, redstone energy conduit. I simply needed these three connections to input 10,000 redstone flux per tick each, and these three connections to output 10,000 redstone flux each. And it's going to take a while for this to re-energize the entire system. But yeah. Um, so that's to show you just on camera real quick that it does not matter um, how narrow you make your conduits at any point because the shape of the conduits is um, irrele irrelevant. The only thing that matters is the connections into the conduit system. You can think of each conduit system as kind of an amorphous blob where every conduit uh, connection connects directly into the central blob-shaped reservoir. So I'm right now dumping, uh, what is it, 21,600 in change redstone flux per tick into the conduits, and I'm taking, um, well, I'm attempting to take 30,000 redstone flux per tick out of the conduits. And you can see that this guy, he's now getting more power than he's uh, outputting. This one is too, and this one in the middle is not. Uh, I'm on the latest version of the pack, which is 2.1.1. As of the second half of recording this episode, I'll go over the changelog uh, tomorrow. One of the issues is that uh, the latest version of thermal expansion broke compatibility with Wayla, but getting thermal expansion bug fixes was more important than you know being able to see the power by mousing over the redstone energy cell. Okay, so now that everything's powered back up and I've demonstrated uh, that um, the, the proper way that the redstone energy conduits work, I'm gonna come back upstairs. And I have one precision export bus pointing into this redstone furnace, which is accepting from the bottom and point, uh, going out the back. And I'm gonna set that to pulverized iron and it's gonna quickly fill up with pulverized iron and stout, start producing iron ingots. Then all I need to do is to stick my impulse item duck on the back of that. And the iron ingots will start going out and into... Oh, hey, you know what helps? If you actually set things to output properly. There we go. Now the iron ingots are going out the back. And because um, I have everything exporting directly into the AE system and importing from it, there's, there's no possibility of a backlog happening. And if I look up my iron, I can see that my iron ingots are slowly ticking up. My iron ore and nether iron ore is getting used up faster than it's generating. Everything is copacetic. So I'm going to set up the rest of the um, stuff upstairs to do the same thing. And these on the end, these pulverizers, one of them is going to be dedicated to nether coal. And I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to uh, adjust the rest. But basically, I'm going to set things up so that um, the rarity of the... Uh, um, gem is like I'll I might have diamond and emerald on the same one I'll definitely toss uh the uranium and yellow right into something uh, along with something else probably platinum that's a very low um chance of outputting because each one of these uh precision export buses can handle up to eight items which is why I'm using that kind in particular I suppose that could be a basic because I'm probably never going to want to do more than pulverized iron in that uh um redstone furnace Anyway, once I have it all configured and set up, I will be right back and, uh, you know, we'll do the sign-off thing. All right, folks, everything's all configured. Got everything looking nice up here. I am producing more Yalorium. Currently have 22 extra ingots, which means I should be producing faster than I'm using. Come over here. This guy's full up, using about mm, 11 and a third thousand redstone flux per tick. Not bad. Need to start uh, using more. Seems that the laser drill gets a, a pretty big efficiency bonus. I thought it would take 20,000 redstone flux per tick and just work faster being way up there. Seems that it uh, actually takes half as much power 
and works at the same rate. So that's a little different. Got my inventory all uh, organized out here for you guys. Oops, that's named wrong. There we go. Tinker's construct stuff, smeltery high oven, and the old, uh, you know, tool stencils and such. Uh, this is your cyclic ore processing chest with the diamond hammers and, and a mess. All the schematics, cyclic assemblers, autonomous activators, you can set that back up if you want. Inventory is all going in here, including the new stuff. All of my other miscellaneous quest rewards that I haven't started using yet are is going into this chest right here. I'm doing this mostly to keep this uh, easy access and outside of the AE system because like these music discs would eat up a lot of space and so would the fish. A lot of this is single item stuff that would take up an entire type on its own. Here's all of the extra machines I'm no longer using like the old generators and dynamos and stuff. I still have a bit of that uh, liquefacted coal that I guess I could turn into power but I pretty much don't care about power anymore. And if I come over to my applied energistic system and I take a look at ore, everything's being processed that can be processed. So coal appears, coal goes away. To process bauxite and rutile, I would need to get into mariculture or mariculture and build the crucible furnace. So I'll have to get into that sometime soon. Uh, another copper, I'm still waiting to complete that quest. I don't know how close I am. Hopefully that'll be all I need. I am three short. That is a shame. Um, cobalt ore and ardite, I'm not directly processing at the moment. Nether rutile is having the same problem as regular rutile. Whoops. Appetite cannot be processed by machine. It has to be done by hand. So if I want to, you know, for example, start using a whole bunch of fertilizer from forestry, I could set up a autonomous activator and a fortune pickaxe to smash that stuff for me. And that's all of the ores. Everything else is being used. I can get these advanced drawbridges out of here. Put them into the quest reward section because that's where they belong. So there you have it. Massive power generation being turned into massive resource generation, all being automatically processed through. If I take a look at my pulverized, oops, if I could spell, almost all of it's being uh, used. I'm not smelting the pulverized shiny metal because that stuff's useful for making, uh, uh, what is it called? This stuff, um, enderium. And if I take a look at my dust, because the, oh, I'm generating extra nether quartz dust. Huh, I have gold dust. I wonder where that came from. And iron dust. This stuff should not be existing right now. It must have, uh, actually, I have no idea why I have that stuff. Hmm. Anyway, I'll go tell it to, you know, smelt this up because the only use for the, uh, gold and iron dust is to be smelted. Um, and the aluminum, um, gets ground into dust and that's being smelted up as well. So there you have it, folks. Fully automated resource generation with a fully automated big reactor powering it. Resources will come into the system pretty much passively at this point. If I were to look up, say, my iron, well, I have 5,000 iron ingots, 4,000 gold ingots, 500 diamonds. Yeah, yeah, I'm in a good spot on resources. I'll be able to uh, push my way through the rest of the uh, quest line pretty quick. And with the uh, pulverizer and... Um, redstone furnace setup i'm using a lot less power than i was before so next time i'm going to get started onto blood magic because i've been waiting on it for a while now and i really 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 want to finish up that for the wizard uh, i mean your wizard steve series of quests and the next step along that way is to make the di uh, divination symbol um ooh, and i get free catalysts out of it nice oh wow so yeah, I hadn't checked this out since uh, 2.1 came around. Clearly, uh, I need to go back and redo some stuff because there's a whole bunch more uh, um, Thumbcraft quests in between the alchemy. I, I mean, that spawn off of the alchemy. That's pretty nice. So yeah, next time we get started on more wizard quests and I make sure that I've... Uh, 
collected, uh, finished up all of the other quests in between. Still need to make that deep tank at some point. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Hope you have enjoyed this episode, and I hope it's been uh, useful to some of you. Um, if you are enjoying things, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, it helps me out quite a bit. Um, oh yeah, one last thing. Um, I decided that I'm not going back to the nether with that steel armor. I'm going to make myself something better from one of the magic uh, um, mods. So I enchanted up my uh, Thaumcraft robes, gave my goggles a revealing protection for, my thaum Thaumaturge's robes protection for on breaking three thorns too. My leggings got Unbreaking 3 Fire Protection 4 and Thorns 2, and my boots got Haste 3 and Repair 2. So the boots will keep themselves repaired, which is kind of nice. And I'm gonna just going to leave that on the uh, armor stand for you, being all glowy. Ooh, you know what I should do? I should leave the heart uh, canisters behind for you, too. Huh, looks like I'll stay um, with a whole bunch of HP until uh, I get damaged. So, there we go. You guys are all set. World download should be up with this episode in the comments below. See you next time.